can always get after our episodes. And that's always good. It's not necessarily like it's trying to convince me or change my mind on anything, but just yeah. to reflect on either like-minded ideas, new ideas, new perspectives, even if we agree overall, just new ways of looking at things. So yeah, we definitely, I like. I think like we have a good, time. I think we have good chemistry with conversations. So I don't think that's a problem at all, but what we're about to do, we're about to get into the makings of you. The joy of children laughing around you. These are makings of you. It is true. So, Don the Dog, thank you so much for being with us this evening. Once again, I'm the host, Mr. D713. And before each episode, we have a little intro, get to know our guests a little bit better, a little bit about their background, their upbringing, their points of view, maybe why they think the way they think. And I am so happy to finally have you on for this episode of The Makers of You. So, Don, how are you doing today? I am doing well. All is well with me. I've seen better Fridays, but all is well nonetheless. Okay, okay. You listen. You listen to the show, okay? So I know for sure you listen to the show. You know, some people are caught caught off guard when I ask them these questions. So you may be a little bit more well prepared. But are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. All right, let's do this. Okay, first question. How would you describe yourself? How would I describe myself? Well, I'm going to allow that to be the segue to my silent plug of introduction, of course. I would describe myself as Don the Daw. Uh, Don the Daw is Don Townsend, uh, originally from Houston, Texas, raised in Dallas, Texas, but grew up in Houston, Texas, as I like to say. I'm a University of Houston Cougar graduate. Who's house? Who's house? You know, uh, I, um, I am a... Overall, uh, inspiration is how I would describe myself. At least that's the legacy that I want to leave is just a legacy of inspiration. I feel that that's more part of my gift. I feel like everybody's gift is not tangible. And so I am a giant ball of rolling fire and reflection and inspiration. So. All right. Inspiration. What do you identify as? Identify as a fist or ratchet. No, just kidding. I identify as an African-American woman. No, hold on. Oh, 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 what? Can you repeat that again? <laughs> so fist or ratchet. So fist or ratchet. So okay. fist or ratchet, right. Okay. So fist or ratchet New is word. slightly, is highly sophisticated with a slight hint of ratchetness when needed, when necessary. That's why it comes second. You know, we have to put things in order. So fist or ratchet. You know, you see the sophisticated first, but when it's time to get down, it's back then at the end, hanging on, waiting. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I identify as a black woman. Uh, I get asked a lot of times what my nationality is or what my ethnicity is, what you mix with is how most of my fellow people like to say. But I am black and Frenchman is what I readily identify as. Um, so. Okay. Okay. All right. Black and Frenchman. We'll touch on that later. Okay. What what's your sign? My sign is Capricorn. My birthday is January third. Okay, Capricorn, January third. You know, that was a question I was gonna ask people later on, but you I'm glad you threw it in there. Let's get that out the way. Okay, you know, okay. Capricorn. And it's kind of funny because I, although I am getting more into my astrological practices, um sometimes I read that Capricorn and I'm just like, mm. Not, not so much. Maybe like a third of the stuff. Not even half. Like maybe like a third. Mm. I'm just so, but I'm very outside of many boxes that would typically like to fit me. So, okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Next question: How would you define your childhood and your upbringing? Spoiled AF. Uh, I know you have a lot of different listeners, so I'm going to try to watch my mouth on this episode. But uh, I would say I would say uh, really well off, really fortunate. Um, although I did grow up in a single parent household, my mom had a lot of help um, with my grandmother. And she had a few friends that, you know, were around. And I considered their kids like my family. My cousins is how we identify now, like a little bit older. 
my mom was always the mom that was taking other people's kids in as well. So I have some sisters and brothers that, you know, to me are adopted sisters and brothers just because, you know, they grew up in my household or, you know, have spent years out of their life in my home and things like that. So, but I had a really good upbringing. Um, Again, although it was single parent household, my mother was a dentist. And so financially, she was very well off just to suffice for us in that manner. There were some other ways that, you know, hindsight looking back, it's like, okay, now I see why she worked so hard. But mm, it's one of those things. That's why sometimes it requires two parents because it's such a balance. But I grew up really spoiled, got mostly everything I wanted. I did everything very advanced. I was moved up a grade. So I was always the youngest. And um, so I got I did everything really ahead of my time. Okay. So just confirm your only child? No, I'm not an only child. I am next to the youngest out of five children. Five children. Um, Okay. Okay. Yep. I have uh, two oldest siblings. They're my half siblings. We share the same father and they have different mothers. And then the youngest of us three, we all have the same mother and father. Okay. Okay. So I'm a middle child when it comes to my mother's children. Mm. And I'm in the middle three, but at the bottom of the middle three, because I have one younger than me. Okay, okay. Did you ever feel like the middle child? You couldn't feel like the middle child. You were spoiled, though. I always felt like the middle child, actually. Like, always felt like the middle child. Um, So when I was in the fourth grade is when we met my oldest brother. So, Mm. mm mm-hmm. And so that was really interesting. And so up until then, I felt it mostly. And even then, uh, when I was in the fourth grade, I was like, seven or eight I think I was eight I think I was eight when I was in the fourth grade maybe like seven when I was in the fourth grade and so my brother is right at about 19 years older than me and so when I met him it was that's the first time where I stopped really feeling like a middle child because then I had someone see my mom my brother always had my mom He was the oldest out of my mom's kids, you know, in the house. He was the oldest and the only boy. So he had my mom off the rip. That was her firstborn. That was the only boy. You know, she she clinged on to the fact that he was over outnumbered by girls most of his life. So my, my my brother had my mom, and then my little sister up until my senior year of high school. My sister, being the baby, always had grandma. Of course, grandma's going with the baby. She rocking with the baby. That's grandma's baby right there. So Mm -hmm. my little sister had my grandma. So, yeah, I was in the middle and all I had was school and I did so well at school. That's where I got all my attention. Everything Mm -hmm. else kind of went to the wayside. But when it came to school, because I had all them A's, that was like, oh, that's your pat on the back. So I always made sure to thrive in school. So we lean on Dawn for the education. Okay. 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 (laughs) Where do you consider home? Houston. Okay. Houston is home always. Yep. Okay. Okay. And it was just because you was raised there. It's just, would you? I was born there. I was born in Jefferson Davis Hospital. If anybody knows, that's the hospital that burned down. It's no longer there. But yep, I was born in Jefferson Davis Hospital. Grew up in Hyam Clark, right there on Trail Lake. Shout out. So we're right there. And even though I, you know, we moved to Dallas when I was a really young child, but that was just always just more my vibe. I went back at 17, right at 17 for college. Did you run back? It was like, I'm I'm going back. Okay. Who? Who? Okay. Who? John. <laughs> Stick. Yes, yeah, yeah. I was in there. Yeah, I was. Uh, I went back, but again, I went to college at 17. I had just turned 17 that January. Went to college in, you know, that following August. So again, still the baby. Not even really legal, but I could get in everywhere because we had the college ID. And the college IDs at that time for U of H was your credit card, too. It had money on it. Oh, that, that cool. Hold on, hold on. Was that, it's that Cougar, what is it, Cougar Cash, what was it called? It was, um, no, I think it was just Cougar card. Because it was like your debit card. It was black. I it mean, was black. If I look around. I, I still have mine. I, I, probably still, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So you went around 06, right? I went in 05, yep. 05, okay, okay. I can't remember mm-hmm. a year later. But yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Growing up, did you have any chores? If so, what were they? Uh, so, no, we didn't have, like, steady chores in my house. Like, this is what you do, like, every day or before you go to bed, anything like that. We didn't have chores like that. Okay. okay. And, you know, uh, 
to just to put it out there again. I grew up real spoiled, like for even part of my life, not many years, but for uh, many years of my life on and off, we had like a house cleaner that would come once or twice a week. So, you know, my mom, again, that was just, you know, the life that my mom kind of built for herself because she had three kids by herself. So imagine that and trying to clean up and clean up a kitchen behind, you know, two that are, you know, older. And then you got one that's four years younger. She's single. She's a dentist. And my mom has always been pretty much at the top over there. So, you know. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. You know, that's what we build for our, our kiddos now. Future kiddos. Let's say that. Okay. okay. What? Let's see. I just want to say shout out to you real quick for introducing me to this ring light because it it's make a difference, so right? Much it make a yes, it it make a difference. Like- <laughs> like, I'll tell you, it, it's it's bad B feelings when you do that, man. It's like okay, I see what they mean. You know, you want to pose a little bit, you know, right? You know, make sure one time for the one time you just wipe the camera off. The wipe the camera screen. real quick. Playing in form, okay. So, what were or what are your beliefs? Oh, that's a very broad question. Welcome to the making okay. of you. All right. So what are my beliefs? Uh, my beliefs are authenticity and reciprocity and intentions. If I had to sum it up in three words, um, without any elaboration, I would say authenticity would have to definitely be number one. Authenticity. Uh, yeah, I think me and you have had conversations before that kind of lead to that being your authentic self, especially if your authentic self requires you to have to be filtered sometimes. But I think that that's the beauty of authenticity is actually, and it took me a minute to get here. Like there's a click that happens when you realize that you can be your authentic self without being on that side of the line. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's it. No. I think that's what our conversation is going to be like when we do our show. But go ahead. Go ahead. We're we going to get into it, though. So, yeah, I mean, though, that's... And then, you know, for those people who are... Once you make sure that you want... That you're on the side of the line that you intend to be on, there's that intentions part, right? There's that intentions part. It goes right into it. Mm-hmm then that's whenever you can see what type of reciprocity you're getting from that person. Is that person trying to be understanding when you're being explanatory or, you know, is this person being receptive to what you're giving them? And that's that reciprocity part. So I would say those are my, my immediate beliefs that I could speak on. Okay. Like, like it. What was, or what's an impactful moment in your life? Ooh. Okay. Well, we're going to bar none, and we're going to just be real because this is a major part that I'm still very active. A uh, major impact in my life was in 26, in January of 2016, I was out waiting on a friend. Um, my friend actually never made it to where I was at, and I was a little intoxicated, and I was even more intoxicated because I was drugged by a group of people. And I was sexually assaulted slash raped, I'll say it, just because I know that for some people, they have a difference in the two. And so that was probably the most impactful moment, probably of my entire life. Um, So, yeah. Wow. Okay. And just confirm, because, you know, we are authentic here and we check on each other. You know, I love my guests. I love my people. You know, are you receiving any assistance or stuff like that? Absolutely. We got people, we got resources for you. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And I appreciate that. No, um, at that time, I was getting right back into a church here, Antioch Missionary uh, Fellowship Baptist Church. If you're not aware of it, definitely check it out. Um, Our new pastor, Chris Wesley, is absolutely amazing. Um, He's a younger pastor, so he really, really caters to what we need to hear and keeps it real. So, Um, At that time, you know, just as a member, I was receiving services through someone who was also in my church family, which was very good and very healthy. Um, You know, I've taken breaks here and there, but I'm now actually, you know, back, you know, I have someone that I talk to, a therapist or a counselor or whatever people like to call them, my LPC. 
um, not for that particular reason, just but for life in general. Right, and sometimes right. we go there. So yeah, absolutely. That yeah. mental health is part of, you know, that mental health and what it means to me now is part partly came from that. So mm. they always say God gives for those of my Christians out there that may be listening to this episode or here, they always say, you know, God gives his, you know, strongest, toughest battles to the strongest soldiers. And it's kind of funny because, you know, I was just called on to help somebody else that recently went through that um, mm. a sexual assault, um, actually just last week. And it was wow. a middle of the night call that I got. And, you know, they knew someone knew that I had been through that experience and reached out. And I was just even though it threw me for a loop and caused me to need to call my LPC, you know, mm -hmm. it still was very amazing to be that vessel and that strong person because not a lot of people could have maybe given her just those words that I was able to give her. So it was very impactful in a lot of ways, but very positive in the end. Well, I would like to say thank you for sharing this with us, um, as well as being that voice of reason or that resource to others that may need resources for them in their life. And I like to say thank God for bringing you to, you know, from that, you know, not to that, but from that mm -hmm. and being who you are, because once again, that means a lot, you know, with everybody, somebody hopefully out there that's listening to this, hear your words and hear your, you know, your your tone and how you can feel and your inflection and know, you know, what resources we can take care of. And if you like to share any these resources later on, you know, thank you for sharing, you shout out to church out, you know. Absolutely, obviously, if you reach out to me directly, but you can always reach out to me on any of my social media platforms. Um, you can also reach out to me via email, which I will provide for the description links. Thank you, Don. How do you define joy? Ooh, joy is when you're in a moment of calamity and you can take a deep breath. That's joy. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to break down calamity for some folks. You know, they might haven't heard of that since Looney Tunes, but I'm yeah. just going to stop right there. Okay. What privileges do you benefit from? What privileges do I benefit from? Hmm. I'll be more specific. I guess in that I'm not white, so I don't benefit from white privileges. When I hear the word privilege, the first thing pop in my mind and uh, on September 4th, happy, happy birthday to my big brother, Lewis. It's his birthday today. Sorry, I had to get that in there. Oh, by the way, I called his ass twice, so I'm not a bad sister. I didn't just remember y'all. Called his ass twice and he didn't answer. Happy birthday, Lewis. Yes. Uh, pick up the phone. Did, <laughs> on, did you leave a voicemail? I didn't leave a voicemail, but I'm going to send him a text message, though. Don't worry. Leave a voicemail. Like, one thing, I'm going to just, you know, usually I don't talk during the making of you, but with you, I'm going to talk. Like, boy, I, I still have voicemail from family members that's passed and gone on. Man, I just go back and play them. I've saved them, like, for later. I have them on a um a hard drive, a little mini disc. And, like, it means a lot when you're able to can go back and hear that voice again. Absolutely. But voicemails are not bad, people. Just like, I, I, and you know what? I Actually, that's so funny you should say that because the other day I was just thinking that there's a couple of people that I've called here recently and it was like, hmm, I'm going to leave them a voicemail just so they can have words of encouragement. I wasn't calling for any reason, but it was just, you know, I need to leave them a voicemail so they always have this little tidbit for them. So I agree with you. But yes, when I hear the word privilege on September 4, 2020, the first thing I think of is white privilege and even more funny to bring up my brother because we have a little family calamity that I had to take a deep breath in. Um, you know, and I keep it real, and my family may not like when I put our business out there, but it's out there anyway because they took it to Facebook. So I say that all the time. If you put it on <laughs> Facebook, you give me all willing. I all can right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't benefit from the privilege of the thought. If you do what they tell you, they'll stop killing you. I don't benefit from that privilege. And that was what one of my. I'll now say she's related to me by marriage. I won't say family because I think relatives and family are different. But um, that was a post and that made me feel like privilege. I don't benefit from the privilege of being anything other than black. So even my Mexicans out there, my Latinos, I'm not saying that discrimination doesn't exist, 
but we cannot ignore the current climate of this America and act like we don't know. White and black is what's at the table right now. So. Okay. How were you disciplined growing up? First of all, I feel like I was the only child in my house that was disciplined. That's that middle child thing going on. When me, okay, so me and my brother are a year and a half apart. And we were also in the same grade for most since about the third grade. We've been in the same grade, third or fourth grade, maybe the fourth grade. We've been in the same grade. And yeah, I feel like when we would get in trouble, even on up in the high school, when we would get into trouble, uh oh, sorry about that. When we would get into trouble, um, going off to. I would be the only one that got on punishment. Well, we both would get on punishment, but then I was the only one who stayed on punishment the whole time. Mm. Or I felt like I got a lot more whoopings than everybody else. Mm. And I can specifically remember probably being the only one that was slapped by my grandmother, like dead in the face. Like, like who you talking to? Pop. Oh, you think you're going to buck up and do something again? Pop. Like, I think I was the only one out of the youngest three siblings that like got that type of, yeah, so this is, but I will say, just to cover all of that, my mother is probably the most passive person you'll probably ever meet in your entire life. Like, the most passive person ever. She wants everybody to be happy all the time. It don't matter what type of turmoil that puts her in or anything, anything for anybody. She's like, so if, I'm telling y'all, if the shit said $5.99 on the, Walmart out and she got up to the line and that mug said fifty ninety nine. She is not finna make old girl. If old girl seems like she having a bad day, she is not about to make her go back and check that five ninety nine price. She gonna go on and pay the extra forty five dollars. She's very passive. So with discipline, that was a, a thing. Yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna hear. I'm not gonna be here to fight your mother's battles right here because I would love to hear her point of view about that. But, you know, I, and I want to ask, and I think, you know, usually I would just go ahead and go for it. But I want to ask, since your mother is so passive and you stayed on punishment and you got whoopers, do you believe you deserved them? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I was okay. disrespectful as fuck. Okay. Because my mother didn't, again, my mom just being so passive, she may have known what boundaries were, but she wasn't good at enforcing those boundaries. And, you like and as a kid women. growing up, you're going to press the limits, especially as you keep growing. You 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 press them. And if they don't get caught early enough, they turn big. Um, I mean, I got my last whooping when I was like in grade school. So it wasn't on up into like high school that I was my mouth was real ratchet. But I wasn't doing, you know, she wasn't. I was and I was big. My mom's like this big, literally, like my mom's two inches smaller than me. Like and I'm short. I'm only five, three. Really? So. Oh, yeah, you were taller. No, really, yeah. out of here, man. Um, <laughs> once again, Megan's you. I would keep going to the next question because I'm like, but this happy. You know, we gonna circle back. Don't I know, worry. I know. I know. I <laughs> know. Who are or who were your role models? Absolutely, my mom. Absolutely. Even though our personalities are expressed differently, because ah, oh, now that I'm. The age that I'm at in my 30s, sometimes I hear myself talking, even when it's just me. And I'm like, girl, shut up. You sound like your mama. Like, you are your mom. You are your mother. You Nobody has anything to worry about because when my mom dies, God reincarnated her already, right? That's me. So absolutely, my mom uh, growing up was definitely a role model for me. Um, and then, honestly, growing up, my brother, my oldest brother, Louis. He was a role model for me because even though he was a guy, and that's probably why I come off rough around the edges, he was like that first dose of of realness um, in person and real world, like street realness, like raise yourself type realness. You know what I'm saying? And this is a mixed kid. And, you know, you you take on who your father is, you know, um, and one of your episodes actually talked about that. Um let me go find the name and then I'll quote it. But you had a, a speaker on there and he was talking about that, taking on who your father is. Um, he's with one of the black militias. Are oh, you talking about Regal? 
I believe so. It was your episode. Um, Season two, episode 11. Episode 11. What's the name of that one? Because I wouldn't um, know. It ain't effing around. Maybe so. Yep. No, it, not effing around. Yeah. Yep. That mm-hmm. one. And so, you know, when I when I met my brother in the fourth grade, he was just like, again, my first dose of realness. And then. My brother came in and he looked at everything very neutral. So again, my brother could always run to my mom. And if it was between me and my brother, it was likely my brother who was either going to get, you know, his way or that last little whatever. When it came to my sister, she had my grandma. My brother was the first one who came in and like we were all three, his siblings on like such an equal playing ground. And then him coming from the outside, he could see a lot of times like where I was kind of stuck in the middle. Yeah. So he did, he played to that just in creating that equity, not necessarily equality. No, I'm glad you used that. Thank you for the thank you. It's, it's a difference, people. It's, it's a, difference. a difference. A lot of people so, argue and don't understand okay. it. I'm gonna, pull, I'm gonna pull it back. I'm gonna pull it back. So right now, going to our next question. Um, if you could start over in life, would you? Yes. Okay. Okay. And once again, you don't got to deep, deep go into detail, but. Because I only take I only take the question as you give it to me, and I think we've been in a conversation before where we kind of had something like this, and that's why I got the question from. You know? Welcome to three. <laughs> it can be a rabbit hole real quick with that question, but I'm gonna take it as you give it. If I can mm-hmm. start over, yes. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> How do you relax? How do I relax? I love four twenty. I'm not afraid to say it. I love 420, the time and the date. All right. All right. Feel it. Feel it. Uh, I really enjoyed 42020 this year because it was 420. Oh, my. That was great. That was really great. That was a relaxed one. Yep. Let me put that together. Well, go ahead. It was. Yeah. Okay. Um, but no, um, actually, I poll. I love poll. It's amazing. It is therapy. My life is not the same without it. It is, you can tell the difference in me if I don't have pole for extended periods of time. What's pole? P-O-L-E. Pole. Like. Oh, I know, but pole. Fitness. Fitness. Pole. Dance. Dance. Okay, cool. Because, you know, you can do pole vaulting. I don't know. Oh, it is. Yeah. They have pole vaulting. Uh, Pole inversions. We don't do any vaults because we're not jumping off of them, hopefully. I don't think you want to vault off the type of pole I'm talking about. That that may not be too safe. That pole goes vaulting. Okay, okay. But, yeah, I pole. So I love movement and dance. Today, um, I had a really hard, again, it was a really hard Friday for me. But right before I came on, like, I stopped doing my actual work. And I had to, like, take a break and get a workout in because I was like, no, I got to, like, do something to brighten this mood, get ready for this show. Mm-hmm. So movement. Um, I also like to study, um, whether it be reading, practicing with, actually practice with um, my sage, my crystals, um, my journals, my candles, those type of things. More sensual things. I have a lot of sensual re- relaxation practices. Okay, we love it. I see you blossom with the journal. I ain't mad at you. Okay. What is a quote that you live by? Not always the intent. Sometimes it's the effect. And you say that a lot. Uh, do you know who it's from? Yes, it's from Asia Munns. Asia Munns. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Last meal. What will it be and who will prepare it? Pizza. Lou Malnati's in Chicago. Woo! Yes. Yes. Okay. Straight like that. Just straight like that. And it will be Lou Malnati. So I like to consider myself a pizza connoisseur. And for those people who know me, like if you know me, they'll probably agree with you. Like I am, I I, I can rock with some pizza. And Lou Malnati's is amazing. There are a couple of others that are really close right up under that. Like we got Gallagher's in Wisconsin. Mm, you travel for yours. Go ahead. All yeah, right. like it's really good. Like um, there's a place in actually in, I believe it was in Saragossa called the Hippopotamus when I went to Spain. 
Um, and I had pizza there. It was amazing. I ate pizza when I went back to Barcelona in January. Also amazing. I eat pizza everywhere. If it's pizza on the menu, I'm probably going to want to try it, even if that's not my meal, just so I can see where they rank on the list. But yes, last meal, pizzas at Lou Malnati's. Okay. Okay. What would be on the pizza? Pepperoni and green olives. And green olives. Mm-hmm. All right, simple all right, like all right. that. And just for y'all didn't didn't know, uh, shout out to Lumanati. You can actually order from them online and have them shipped to your house. Oh damn! Like from wherever. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They're Chicago based, but they do ship. Um. So the way I found out about Lumanati before I lived in Illinois, I found out um when I was still living in Houston. So this is prior 2013. Mm-hmm. I was still living in Houston. I was working for a third-party logistics company when I was just starting my career in logistics. Um, shout out to M2 Logistics based in Wisconsin, in Green Bay. Um, I don't even know if they're still around. But anyway, I had a customer, a Frito-Lay customer, and I moved like really good freight for them. And one of their um, you know, plants that I was moving from was up there in Chicago. And I had a guy, one of my clients, he, I just saved a lot of his loads all the time. I was always there, like had extra trailers. I could always find him a driver. So, and he knew I loved pizza. So one day he sent me some and oh my gosh, it was amazing. Then years later, when I moved there, I actually loved it. Got to try it in person. Took my mom there wow. and everything. So, mm-hmm. okay. Okay. We're going to make sure to pencil that in for us later on. All right. What's your favorite holiday? My birthday. Okay. okay. Um, I have, in the last few years, I have really gotten away from all these pagan holidays. Uh, so, yeah, my birthday. We're going to note that for your upcoming episode. Okay. Let. <laughs> and I, 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 know, I know you mentioned it earlier, but if you'd like to re- reiterate, that'd be fine. But how would you like to be remembered? I want to be remembered for inspiring people to be their authentic self. Yes, exactly. Challenging exactly. people to be their authentic self at all times and unapologetically. Okay. okay. Uh, so if, if, if that's just, the, I guess that's the impact I want to leave. If, if I wanted somebody to describe me, like after I'm gone, I want to be like, man, that girl was unapolog- unapologetically herself. Okay. And I want them to say it in the tone of my good always outweighs my bad, even though I can recognize, identify, and try to correct those mistakes as well. Understood. Understood. What are you responsible for? Myself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Myself. And and like I will say, because it changed. That's just my asshole response. No, hey. There's a hey. period at the end of that if I'm being an asshole. But hey, you take it high. Hey. No, right? You, you just um, said be your unapologetic <laughs> self. You... No, seriously though. Um, I am responsible for self and self first, but as an educator, I'm also responsible for the young young minds that come through my classroom and that I'm blessed to have even a hand on remotely. Um, in the world of education. So even if students may not be in my class, they may be, you know, come in contact with me some other way. And I do feel like I'm responsible for impacting them in a positive way to be authentically themselves and create histories they don't have to run from. Mm, so. I like that. Is that, 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 that a quote that you heard before? No, that's my own quote right there. Yeah, you better grab it before I do. All right. right. <laughs> And Quote like, that. No, don't for real. Don't for real, don't for real. <laughs> Last question. How? Last question already. Already, already. I know we got things to do. We gonna come back. We gonna come back. How would you describe your culture? How would I describe my culture? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. How would I describe my culture? I would describe my culture as trying but challenged. Um, I would describe my culture as not equally yoked. 
within itself. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been great. You, I think you were tiptoeing like for season three. Um, people may have heard it already, but I'm finally going to do the making of you on myself. So if you like, you know, I'm trying to get people to ask me these same questions. So yes, please let me host and it. You were like right there. What I say, I then I think we share. You know, we all have our different cultures that, um, how we define what culture is for our own, but. I think you're like tiptoeing the closest to what I did, how I describe our culture or my culture. Um, but yeah, this has been beautiful. Like I loved it. Easy flowing. It, it, we got in depth on so many things. We've been high, we've been low, but at the end of the day, you know, it's who you are, you know? So thank you for being here for the makings of Don the doll. We greatly appreciate you. Make sure to check her out on concrete and blossoms. Dawn is usually with us every Sunday for our happy hours. And, you know, hopefully you may see a little bit more in the future for season three as well. And you can catch me on once again, Concrete and Blossoms. Like, I love our Potter and family. So, once again, shout out to a Take a Space Pod with Leah. Shout out to Truck Cast with DB and Hun V. Shout out to Mike Perkins with uh, Pins of Like Podcast. Shout out to my. And uh, it was this Jay, right? Jill, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I always call it Jay or Jill with yeah. the voice as fuck. Um, BTG Baylor for president. Well, well, Baylor with BTG for president. Um, Shan with she got two. She got two. It's the Cozy Womb podcast as well as um, it is what it is. It's not is what it is. She is. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm getting it. Yep, I'm getting it. I think it's She Can Be. I want to say. I'm looking at it right now, though. Um, let me say, yeah, we're going to keep on doing these shout outs. We shouted out to, oh, why did I click on that one? Yeah, we shouting out to um, She Be Shan. Yeah. Uh, she, she Gets It podcast. She Gets It, yes. Yep, She, she Gets, gets it, it podcast. Yep, and, uh, and Social I, P. Yeah, Social P with Social Complex. I, you know, I shout them out all the time. Yeah. Then, as well as with, you know, season two guests with, um, oh my gosh, King so Colin P. King Colin yeah. P. With him. When it drops, it drops. As well as he has one more. You know, we got a lot of working folks here. But yeah. I don't say just it drops, it drops right now. But man, if I miss anyone, you know, I'm going to catch you later. It's all love. But keep doing what y'all doing, especially with you, Shane. I mean, oh, my Lord, especially with you, Don. Like, I remember just meeting you um, throughout a mutual friend, Jerron. Um, mm-hmm. Just like, Jerron. Yeah, hag, man, much love, baby. Um, you know, good old Cujo High School. You know, we ain't going use the other name any longer, and we ain't going use a new one either. But right. this is what we do here on, on Everything Culture, especially with the makes of you. We look forward to having Don in this upcoming week for our discussions of uh, y'all, y'all stay tuned, but I would like to say, you know, make sure to follow her on Instagram, Facebook. She don't have a Twitter yet. I'm Not getting there. Yet. I'm going to get Not there. Yet, but it's okay. It's no rush. It's no <laughs> rush. You know, we pace ourselves and show all the love. Make sure to follow on her on all streaming sites, especially with YouTube as well. And, you know, keep in touch with us. You know, what, this is what we do here at everything culture and within our family here. So thank you all and God bless.